to another video on Gearsoft Studios, and today I'm going to be showing off 22W04A, where they've changed the amount of armors from 6 to thousands, although there's still only 6 base armor sets. Before I begin, remember, please like and subscribe, and without further ado, on to the video. For this snapshot, there are a couple of things that they've changed. The enchantment glint is now less overpowering, more subtle, and they have changed how netherite is obtained, along with a new armor trimming system to visualize your armor in different ways, along with a smithing table rework. They've been reworked into a workstation that can now do armor trimming and still upgrade to netherite, which is now quite different and much harder to do. And what you can do now is change your armor with smithing templates made with 7 diamonds, 1 block of the material the template is made out of, plus 1 smithing template. And that will get 2 of the same smithing template. And netherite equipment now requires netherite upgrade smithing templates. And they can be found in all Bastion Remnant chests quite rarely, but there's always two in the main thing in the treasure room Bastions. And this is so that way Netherite is a little bit farther into progression. Then, we have a ton of armor trims, and they're all from structures. Podra outposts have sentry, desert pyramids have dunes, and so on. There's one exception and that's the ocean monument and that's from Elder Guardians. You can use 10 different resources for this, listed here. And you are now allowed to use the resource that the same armor is made out of, which means no golden golden armor. Then some things have changed. Otherwise, this is all the snapshot really has to offer. Before we learn how to craft each of these, first let's just take a look at what they look like and how they're obtained. Each of these can be crafted once you get one copy of them by using the resource they appear to be made out of, usually cobblestone, plus seven diamonds, and one copy of each of them. This first one is not cosmetic, it changes diamonds into netherite, and requires a netherite ingot, moving netherite a little bit further back into progression and requiring bastions in order to get it. Then, the rest of these are cosmetic only, don't waste all your netherite or diamonds on getting a really cool armor set, it's just cosmetic. We have the Pillager Outpost, Desert Temple, Shipwreck, Jungle Temple, Ancient City, Stronghold, Woodland Mansion, Ocean Monument, Bastion Remnant, Nether Fortress, and last of all, we have one in the End City. Which means each of these structures is inherently a lot more valuable, because even if you have a farm for everything, you can't farm these, you're gonna have to visit each one at least once. Then. Once you have each of them, here's just the recipe for them. You can see very simple recipes. And what you do from here is you put in the one you want, smithing type weight. Put any piece of armor that isn't a turtle shell or leather and possibly chainmail, not tested yet. And you can change them. As you can see, I made a quartz one. And now we have this display. These are most of them, I'm just going to finish this way in the next clip because I'm missing one of them. But you can see, there's a lot of different cosmetics. Now, for just a little testing, we can see it does indeed work on chainmail. If you ever want to have really fancy chainmail armor, go right ahead. Although, remember, these are all non-renewable resources because they only spawn in structures, and the only other way to get them is using diamonds, another non-renewable resource. Which means there's a finite number of these in each world. If you're prone to dying a lot, then I do not recommend equipping these on your armor, because you are sure to lose them. Especially if you're using netherite ones, because you're going to lose a lot of netherite over time, not to mention the increased price. For a general idea of how rare these items are, I'm just going to look at a couple of these structures. You can see it's not 100%, so don't get your hopes up too much. Going a little further into the temple, we found one wild armor tree. So at least 50-50. We also have a treasure room bastion right here, and these chests right here are guaranteed to have at least one netherite upgrade in them. Which means if you're struggling for netherite, this is the place to be. 
remember to just explore each chest because they all seem to have an equal chance of having something. Although it's definitely not guaranteed by any means. Still, they don't seem to be the most common, so you might have to check a lot of chests. After doing a significant amount of research, but not completely extensive, I've discovered that each of these have anywhere from a 1 in 4 to 1 in 10 drop rate, which varies between structures. The ancient city ones seem to be the rarest, because I've searched about 20 to 30 chests and only found two. While I found the netherite one to be the most common because I've found two of them from approximately seven chests. So I'd assume those are one in seven or one in four. The end cities are also one in ten. Same thing with nether fortresses, along with what seems to be one in four, one in five. Well, actually, it, yeah, it's probably one in five for guardians, along with one in ten for strongholds. Overall, these are quite rare items, and you're going to have to search a lot of structures if you want to get the full set without wasting diamonds. It would also be wise to keep at least one of these, so that way you can copy at any point. Now, for a couple of bug fixes in this snapshot. First off, all goat horns now have a unique name, because apparently in the last snapshot, which I did not cover, they were all named Ponder. Which was quite humorous, but yeah, they've all been re-added. Then, the enchanting glint has been heavily reduced. You can see that it's way less overpowering, not instantly turning everything pink. It's a lot more subtle, which is quite nice. Also, they've made blast protection give less knockback, which apparently was a bug, so it's significantly more useful. For reference. You can see I barely moved at all when I got exploded right there. But if I take it off, you can see I move about three times as far when I don't have it on. Which means if you have it on multiple pieces, then you'll be doing good. Also, I've accidentally destroyed my display. But that doesn't matter. Blast protection is significantly more useful, although now blast protection 4 has randomly been removed, but still an item creative inventory. I have no idea why. But that's an issue. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Also, if my voice sounds a little different for this video and the most recent video after this, the Zeppelin, it's because I have quite a bad cold. So please forgive any vocal errors. With that, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out. Thank mm -hmm. you.